to thank you for joining us on this Legacy Project. You know, to be honest, it's just so good to be able to study the Scriptures together, to take some time, be relaxed, and follow through all this wonderful material that we're sharing, laying out. And uh, you know, the depth of the Word of God is so valuable and so important that we take time to study, take time to learn, take time to grow. And so thanks for joining us on this Legacy Project. I want you to get your Bible, get your notebook, get ready. You can hit pause anytime and look up the Scriptures, check it out. And so let's click that button and get underway. Welcome to the Legacy Project. I'm so excited about what I've got to share on this session. We're going to talk about climbing mountains. You know it's so true, the higher you go, the more you can see, the more you can see, the more you can have. Of course, it was God who said to Abraham, you know, all that you can see, you can have. The, the angel said to the Apostle John, come up here and I will show you. And uh, so really, it's just talking about getting higher in life. And there's a reason why the devil wants to pull us down. We're going to be talking about it. And so we're going to talk about climbing mountains. Jesus was a mountain climber. You know, I love the Word of God. I'm sure uh, you do too. And I love hearing the Word of God. I love reading the Word of God. Nothing like hearing a great message. I listen to messages from other preachers and love reading the Word of God. And, and uh, you know, it's just so inspiring. But I think there's no two ways about it. The blessing comes really when you obey the Word of God. In other words, let's not just be hearers of the Word, but let's be doers also. Isaiah 54 verse 1 says, Sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not laboured with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married. A woman, says the Lord, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. We love this kind of verse, but sometimes we don't want to be enlarged. Sometimes we don't want to be stretched, but enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out your curtains of, of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. You shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear and you will not be ashamed. You know, it is true that God has not raised us up to fail. He has not brought us out this far to take us back again. And it goes on to say, neither will you be disgraced for you will not be put to shame for you will not, for you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Uh, for the Lord has called you. Well, I hope and pray as we go through this particular session in relation to climbing mountains, you'll be so inspired to grow a little more in life, to get a little higher, because remember, the higher you go, the more you can see, the more you can see, the more you can have. You know, when the devil says you're finished, it's over, you're dead. When he says you can do nothing, you've got nothing. You know, I want to encourage you to sing. I want to encourage you to worship. I want to encourage you to praise the Lord. Sing, O barren one, you who have not bore. We need to know what it is to sing in our famine, sing in our hard times, sing in the pestilence time, sing in the pandemic times, right? Sing in your barrenness, the barrenness of finances maybe, or the barrenness of health. We can sing and we can praise the Lord. Sing, O barren one, you who have not born. And look at the way that ended up. God, the God of the whole earth. You know, on the island of Patmos, the island of Patmos, where John, of course, the apostle, was banished in his later years, where he saw the book of Revelation. It's a rocky, barren island, one of the Greek islands, but not quite one of the nicest ones. But the amazing thing is cruise ships go there today. Cruise ships pull up there today. Why? The reason they pull up, not because it's like Santorino and, and one of the most beautiful islands. No, it's because 200 year, 2,000 years ago, God showed up there. God showed up there. John, the Apostle John on the island of Patmos said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice from heaven. And this is what it said. You know, the incredible thing is no matter how dry, how barren it is, God can show up in your life. So burst into song. Paul and Silas at the midnight hour. Wasn't it true? You know, they were chained up. They were, the midnight talks about the darkest hour and they were chained in dungeons and yet they began to worship the Lord. And the old saying, when the saints get free, other prisoners get freed. And so when the saints begin to loosen up, hallelujah, and not become so religious, then other prisoners get loosed also because other prisoners were watching. And you know the story, I'm sure, about Paul and Silas in jail. You know, the church over the centuries has 
had some hard times of barrenness, no two ways about that, and sometimes our own lives. And yet, you know, we see a church, uh, you know, where today where our children and our spiritual children are growing and developing, you know, and it's so, so good. Nations, when I think about nations, the Genesis 25 verse 22, the story of Rebecca about to give birth and she cried out and said, if all is well, why am I like this? Why am I like this, Lord? And he said, two nations are in your womb. In other words, I got bigger plans for you, bigger plans than what you thought for yourself. God always has more in store. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, plans to give you a future and a hope. Amen. You know, I think about Saul. Saul was a donkey chaser. He was out chasing donkeys, looking for lost donkeys, but God wanted to give him a kingdom. And it never ceases to amaze me how God always wants to take us on in life, always wants to take us higher. You know, there's a saying that I heard from Dr. Bernard many years ago, life has lived on levels and arrived in stages. And so often I get asked, well, what, what do you think God is doing in the earth today, particularly in these days of COVID? You know, to be honest, he's doing the same thing he's been doing for 2000 years. He's saving people. He's saving people. People are coming to Christ as never before. He's building His church. May not be quite looking the same as what we thought it would, but He's still building His church. People, hallelujah. And of course, He's establishing His kingdom. He's not looking for any new ideas. You know, God is doing what He's always done. Amen. Building His church. And I want you to think about this. In John 15, Jesus is speaking and he says, abide, 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 abide. In fact, he says it seven times. He only told the wind to be still one time. He only told the blind eyes to open one time. Lazarus, come forth from the grave one time. Maybe it was easier for Jesus uh, to get the blind eyes open and to get the wind still than to get people to abide. In other words, to stay, to stay committed to the house of God, to stay planted in the house of God, you know? And so uh, we, we need to abide in the things of God, amen, and not walk away because things are tough, not, not slip away because things aren't going our way. We've got to get on board with His program, His agenda. He's building His church, and we've got to enjoy the journey because it is an invitation to a journey where Jesus said, come follow me and I will make you. And of course, we know it's in the following do we get made. He'll make us into fishers of men. And of course, He didn't tell them where He was going, but it was a, a path of, of growth. It was a path, a, a highway, a highway of holiness. And so it's a life to be enlarged. It's a life to be strengthened. All the disciples' lives, when you think about Peter, you know, he was a fisherman, but now look at what how he ended up. And, uh, you know, all the disciples, their live, lives got bigger because they followed Jesus. They got strengthened, lengthened. You know, the Bible, we talked about it. Do not hold back. Do not spare. Spread out. In other words, what God's saying in that is do not put a limit on me. Don't put a roof and don't put a ceiling because I have not finished building you yet. In other words, we don't arrive while we are alive. And verse 4 said, do not be afraid. As I've said, God has not raised us up to fail. God has not raised us up to take us back again. I mentioned the apostle to the apostle John, the angel said, come up here and I will show you. I know the devil wants to drag us down, but God wants to lift us up. Sadly, too many Christians at times, we don't want to go higher. We don't want to get bigger. We're, we're happy where we are. We're, we're, we're just kind of settled in life, you know. In fact, there's a scripture where it says Moab, you know, has not been, he, he's settled and he has not been tipped from vessel to vessel. In other words, all the sediment has just settled there. We need to go from experience to experience, from glory to glory, line upon line, precept upon precept. You know, they say the only difference between a rut and a grave is a grave's got two ends. In other words, let's not get stuck in life, amen? But sometimes people don't want to grow. In other words, they don't want to mature. It's like they've got the sign of completion hanging out. They're no longer in faith. In fact, what happens is doubt and fear uh, sometimes can ensnare us, right? But God wants us to become a skyscraper. Let's not settle in a one-level apartment. You know, I think about a bonsai tree or a giant Sherman tree. A bonsai tree, you know, it's picturesque. It sits on the mantelpiece. It's just a little tree. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been pruned and nipped and bound and pop bound. 
And, uh, you know, it's like the devil saying, you're no good, you can't do it, and he just binds you up. But a giant Sherman tree grows 90 feet tall, 60 feet in circumference. It can build five, uh, sorry, 35 uh, five-roomed houses. I mean, that's a lot of lumber, right? So what do we want to be in life? Do we want to be a giant Sherman tree, or do we want to be just that little bonsai tree? We've got to know the Bible. God is always wanting to enlarge us, take us on. None of us have arrived yet. And so we're climbing mountains. And we'll talk about this. See, God wants us to be the head and not the tail. I know, and it's been said, for every new level, there's a new devil. But friend, the higher you go, yes, you can become a target like the Twin Towers. They proved that, right? If you go back to 9-11, the Twin Towers were a target, the tallest buildings in New York at the time. And so the higher you go, the more of a target you can be. But unfortunately, some Christians say, you know what? I'm just going to settle down. I'm just going to back up a little bit. I'm going to take my ease in Zion. I'm not going to give anymore. I'm not going to serve anymore. You know, no, no more going that extra mile, as it were. No more doing what I, more than what I'm doing now. In fact, I'll do less, like hitting retirement or whatever. I often say some people give a tenth, a tenth of what they should. <laughs> some people put $2 in the plate and expect heaven to stand up and applaud. But you know, our giving should increase over the years. Our serving should increase over the years. Some people say, well, I'm not going to come out to the prayer meeting anymore. We should be praying more, uh, you know, being discipled more. Um, Sometimes people say, well, I'm just not going to forgive that person who hurt me. Um, you know, we, we can't afford to do that. We, we, but you'll continue to get hurt. You'll continue to get offended. But whatever comes your way, in, you know, I just go, you know, Jesus said, P Peter comes to Jesus and said, Jesus, how often should I forgive my brother? So seven times. And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. And so you just got to keep going. And and, uh, you know, uh, I've met Christians and, you know, maybe they're gossipers, you know, and uh, they're, they're just happy to be gossipers. They don't want to change. They don't want to give it up. Maybe they're coveters. They covet other things that other people got and they live with that. They live with that. They're comfortable with their problem, but it's holding them back. It's holding them back. They may not say it out loud that they're not prepared to give it up. They may not say out loud that they're comfortable being a gossiper or a slander or, or I'm not going to forgive that person, but they're living with it. And actions speak louder than words. And so these people can't push any higher. They can't enlarge their tent pegs anymore. They can't broaden out to the left or right or, or go higher to see more, to have more in that sense, right? And so they can't lengthen, can't go any higher. And, and so they don't want to soar like an eagle. They just are walking around like a turkey. But an eagle soars higher than any other bird, not like our kiwi bird. Here in New Zealand, of course, our national emblem, he can't even get off the ground, right? And, uh, you know, there are many kind of Kiwi Christians around just, you know, just nibbling on the ground and never soaring in the heavens like God intended us to do. The biblical bird in the Bible, of course, is the eagle. We need to be heaven bound and not earth bound. Amen. And sometimes even as eagles, we don't want to let go of things. I'm reminded of the story of a little boy who was into photography and he loved um, photographing eagles. And, uh, you know, he, he went out one day and was looking for an eagle and, and he climbed the mountain and couldn't see one. He climbed higher and couldn't see one climbed higher. And all of a sudden, you know, there was this flap of wings and he thought, an eagle. But no, it was a vulture and he was a bit disappointed, he claimed higher. And next thing, this majestic eagle was soaring right out in front of him. And he was clicking away on his camera and the eagle uh, obviously spotted something on the ground and zoomed down to the ground and plucked it up and saw back. And the boy got all on camera. I can remember being in Canada and, uh, you know, down by a river mouth up by Sostrochikin. And I'm not pronouncing it right, but uh, there's a place there and there's so many bald eagles, so many. Uh, it's like incredible. It's like, you know, they're like seagulls and they're swooping in the river, picking up salmon. It's a majestic scene. But in any case, this boy uh, saw this eagle go down, picked this prey up and saw again. And um, the boy is photographing away. And, and next thing, this eagle's plummeting to the ground again. And the boy's so excited, thinking he's going to go and get another play. And his te telescopic lens there, and he's soaring and soaring. And the eagle plummets down, plummets down, plummets down. And instead of soaring back up, it just went bang on the ground. 
and, uh, and and didn't get back up. And the boy was, whoa, what happened here? And the boy was just like, whoa, you know, just overcome. And he had to get down the mountain to find out what happened to the eagle because he couldn't believe what he saw. And so he climbed down the mountain, walked up to the eagle, and here was the eagle dead on the ground. And he couldn't believe it. And the eagles swooped down and swooped back up. And, uh, and incredibly, he turned the eagle over and there on the eagle's chest was a weasel. This weasel had eaten out the eagle's heart. Rather than letting go of the weasel, the de- uh, sorry, rather than letting go of the weasel, the eagle held on to that which was eating him up. You know, what that which was destroying him. And sometimes as Christians, we can hold on to things. We can hold on to that bitterness, hold on to that envy, hold on to that unforgiveness, and it can eat us up and it's killing us and we don't know it. Amen. You know, don't live a roof. Uh, with a, uh, don't live your, your life with a roof on your destiny. Let's not put a roof even on the church, right? Let's not limit things with God just because we've got a building. You know, on the island of Crete, in the island of Crete, uh, they tell me there's a government tax of 45% uh, when the roof goes on. And so what people do is they build one story and they put a flat roof on it. Uh, well, they call it a floor. They don't call it a roof. Uh, and they put the reinforcing rods. You'll see these buildings. They put the reinforcing rod uh, through that floor, through the roof, right? In other words, they, they say the building's not complete because we're going to build a second story. But that second story never gets built. It's a way of getting the ta- around the tax, right? So the tax never gets paid because officially the roof is never on. But they have no intention of going higher. You know, come up here, go higher, stretch out, enlarge. Remember up the mountain, there is provision. Do you remember Abraham? Abraham climbed a mountain uh, with his son. And do you remember there was a ram caught in the thicket? The ram was already there. God has your provision for you when you're prepared to climb. Up the mountain, there's revelation. Remember Moses? Where did he get the revelation? The Ten Commandments, the tablets, up the mountain. You know, the devil looks at the church and uh, looks at Christians that, that, that have got their roof on, that are comfortable in life, that are lukewarm in life, and he just smiles and goes on his way because he, we are no threat to him, right? No threat to hell. We're not advancing the kingdom. Lukewarm people uh, can be a hindrance, you know, and people who are comfortable, people who don't want to progress on, not taking any new ground. It's like they've had their day. But as a church and as a Christian, I want to continue to keep going no matter how old I am, right? I want to keep building in my life. I may not be building the same things that I was building when I was 30 or 40, but I still want to expand my heart, my spirit. I want to grow in Christ. Amen. I want to keep going higher until Jesus comes back. And so we can limit the blessing of God in our lives when we don't walk in faith, but just park up. And so we can limit God. I'm going to close off the session and the next session I'll be opening up with ways we can limit God because it's true. We can limit God and His fulfillment of His promises to us by having no patience. It's through faith and patience we inherit the promises. I don't want to limit God and I don't want to limit the promises of God and therefore I need to develop patience because it's through faith and patience we inherit the promises. Amen. And so, you know, when you know how you limit God, then you have the responsibility to make adjustments. And I've got to adjust things in my life when I realize that these things are hindering my growth, hindering uh, from and limiting God. I've got to adjust my life. And so I want to encourage you always to grow, always to get a little bit bigger. We're going to be going up mountains in session two and three. I hope and pray that you stick with it. So God bless you. Thanks for joining us on this Legacy Project.